Juno, we were down the beach and Juno just found a message in a bottle. Can you turn it around so I can have a good look? So there's a message inside and a cork and show me the lid because it's even been waxed on so that it stays mm. watertight. But I can see it's a little bit leaked in there so you might not be able to see. You just knew what it was, eh? You knew it was something interesting as soon as you saw it floating. Hey, Gina. How did you get so, it? Uh, the thing she found. Let go in the water. Try and pull it out. Oh, see if you can. It's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, Amazing. So I just carefully get it out now. Because it's very, very old. some little it. fingers. I can get it. No. Can I just free it up just a little bit? I can make some letters. You can pinch it with your hands and get out. Ah. Carefully. I'm really very very well. This is how this is how unschooling families communicate with each other. <laughs> <laughs> he reads Whoa, it at all. it's got still all the light. Writing on it. Holy shit! Take a photo of the writing oh, so that it, if it fades. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it do you know it's from Indonesia. Wow. Please call. You call, and then it's got a phone number. Nineteen seventy-three. Wow, oh that's word. amazing. The eleventh of the ninth, Pedong, Mentawai, Indonesia. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> that is the most. <laughs> you did not think it would be like that amazing, was, eh? I thought it was a family over the bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's really my cool. Goodness, that is the coolest. So where's it thing? from? It's from a country. Do you want to get go get a map? Do you want to hear name. about it? Mentawai. Yeah, that's a bummer eh, that there's no name because that we yeah. would have actually been able to find. Um, the Mentawai Islands are a chain of 70 islands, 150 kilometers off the western coast of Sumatra in Indonesia. So they're going to have, it's yeah. going, they're going to be like islands with palm trees. Oh yeah, it's a um, surf. Monkeys. Oh look, there's another message in the bottle. It must be quite common there. Google it, Lucy. Yeah, hey, look, these are these are the Mentawai people, keep the indigenous now, people of Mentawai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not if we lose it. They have a practice of sharpening their teeth to make them really sharp. I'm oh. in awe. So we're just completely. I'm amazed. Hold on, I'm just gonna say about this because we're completely freaking out that it is the 9th of November, and it was. It seems we're not 100% sure, but we're pretty. Certain that that's it definitely says the 9th, so it was either sent on the 11th of September or it was sent on the 9th of November, which is today's date, 45 years later. November 2018, Friday the 9th, and that's what we've got here. <laughs> it is freaky. If it wasn't for that bit, I'd be like. Wow, this is so amazing, but with the date thing, I'm like, this awesome. is so weird. I'm kind of like, kind of That's freaking a out a little bit. All that time. <laughs> and all the changes and all the things that have happened. Bloody hell. Are you glad we found that? Oh, I'm so glad you found it. How do you feel, Juno? Glad. 7177. Can it's all dry now? Oh, is it ring? Oh. oh! Please dial again. It's changed or is no longer available. Bummer. Um, my name's Tim. Have you got kids that might have made a message in the bottle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we got the message in the bottle. Oh, where did you find it? Just, um, Fananaki Beach. Where are you? Where are you? It's a bit weird because it's it's the um, uh, it's made to look like it's from Indonesia in 1973. Oh, cool. <laughs> when did you do it? When did you do it? A couple of days ago, I was checking the creek there. Oh, you got us all excited. <laughs> 
Oh, that's cool though. So you just chuck it in the creek at the north end of the beach? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's where we found it. It was really, um, we really got a buzz out of it and we're like freaking out. What's your name? Carlos, we're just back from the shop here. Oh, oh choice, Carlos Donison. <laughs> How old are you, Carlos? 13. 13. That was a good prank. <laughs> <laughs> Coaster, seriously. <laughs> For a minute there, we thought the whole trajectory of our lives was changing. I envisioned us like chasing down the sender of the message and then moving to the Mentawai Islands in order to help them fight climate chaos. <laughs> so we had a very good laugh at Carlos's little prank and uh, we also spoke with Juno about how it's actually still really, really amazing to find a message in a bottle, even if it's just from Carlos from Up By The Shop. You know, nobody finds messages in bottles. So that's like really cool. When I was a kid, I sent many messages in bottles. Sorry, Ocean. And I was, so take away 45 years old, the Mentawai Islands. <laughs> the same day in 1973. Take all that away and it's still kind of cool. So we are talking with Juno as if it is like still an amazing, amazing find. And what a cool, like in that two hour period after finding the message in a bottle, we trace the journey that it might have taken through the ocean. So that must be like oceanology, geography. Like we took a look at the Mentawai Islands, where they were. We took a look at some of the tribal practices of the Mentawai Island people. Just so many different aspects of learning from that one little discovery. And that is kind of how our life learning journey is. Without really overthinking it at all, we just see opportunities and then a couple of hours later we look back and we've seen that we've covered so many aspects of education in a really natural and curiosity-based way. That's not what I mostly want to talk about today. What I mostly want to talk about today is magic or believing. <laughs> because I've been thinking a lot about what it was that made all four adults absolutely convinced that that was real. I mean, you, you've seen the footage, it did look very, very old, right? But we immediately believed it. All of us, we were just like, whoa, this is amazing, this is completely unbelievable, but we believe. And I think that's because all four of us, so me, my hubby Tim, and my parents, my mum and dad, that's who you saw in the video. We're believers, we believe in magic. We've seen so many amazing, unbelievable things happen in our life that it leaves us really open to seeing magic. And this believing, it, it does have a bit of a sharp edge, like the disappointment that you feel when you've believed so hard in something that turns out not to be true. And also, Tim and I were part were victims of a pretty awful um, hoax on the streets of London in our first year of marriage that had the real potential to drop us into a cynicism or a scepticism. But you know what, even with that sharp side, I don't wish I was a more cynical person. I don't wish I was somebody that didn't believe that miracles happen. My little girl Juno, the one who found the message in a bottle, she is absolutely in love with the idea of magic and it actually makes her emotional. Sometimes she cries herself to sleep saying I just wish magic was real and my response to her is always do you know magic is real magical things happen every day if we're open to them the next day on our holiday we moved camp and we went up to a camp where there's um, kiwi birds around and we traipsed into the forest late at night under the the tiny bit of light that the new moon was casting and we bundled up in blankets and sat and waited under a puriri tree that had a ruru, which is the native owl. And it was right on a branch above us and it was hooting away. And we sat there listening for the calls of kiwi birds. And while we sat there in silence, we heard them calling to each other, which is something I never ever thought I would get to listen to or that my children would get to listen to because they're incredibly rare and they're incredibly shy. And we heard them calling across the forest. And it felt amazing. And there's miracles like that that happen every single day. Music is a miracle. Oh my goodness. A rhythm and harmony can absolutely lift your spirits from like the lowest place. Dancing is a miracle. How we can move our bodies, how we can move our bodies together and create beautiful things. How we can release sadness and sorrow by moving our body. That is a miracle. Flowers. Ah! Flowers are miracles. That's 
that is magic. Vegetables that you can plant a seed in the ground and then it becomes a vegetable that you can eat that nourishes your body. And what about all those times, those weird times of synchronicity when you're thinking about someone and then ping, you get a text from them. Or when you've just been in exactly the right place at the right time. I count something as magic. And um, being when we met our co-owners, few things fell into place. In fact, two different things fell into place that made sure we would absolutely get to meet our co-owners. And now, four years later, we own land together and are forging community here with each other. The whole process of coming here to our land has just felt full of miracles, tiny little miracles every day and magic that just makes your jaw drop in wonder that that could happen. I'm sure if you have a little think now, you can think of something that was so weirdly synchronized or just had this fears of strangeness or inevitability about it that just made you see that there's a whole other dimension to the world. I just read a book called The Magic Shop by a neurosurgeon and it's an amazing book. I highly recommend that you read it. And it's quite cool because he's obviously you know, brain guy. But he has uh, also built his life on these principles of meditation and visualization. And he, his whole story just reads like an amazing thing. And it, and it really feels like it bridges the gap between the esoteric and science. It looks, it looks at what's going on with your brain when you're visualizing and, and meditating and manifesting and how that really can make a big difference in your life about whether good stuff happens to you or doesn't. As a little bit of a funny one, because I do use a lot of meditating and visualizing practices both for my work and my life, but if I have a favorite, I actually favor just prayer. The simplicity of praying. All prayer really requires of you is a little tiny, tiny kernel of faith. There's something else going on, something bigger than just our tiny physical experience here. So miracles, magic, synchronicity, whatever you wanna call it, I'm a believer, even if this time it actually wasn't as magical as we originally thought it was. Now I know that we've all got stories of amazing things happening. I'd love to hear yours. Do let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more of me, you can check out my Patreon, which is patreon.com lulastic. There's a link below. Wherever you are in the world, stay radical. Mwah! Tim's just made up a new national sport. This is flipper rugby.